Hey, welcome everybody to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. We are in the iHeartRadio studios. We're about to go live for everyone else here in a few minutes. But for those who enjoy the watching the behind the scenes and seeing uh, seeing what actually happens, uh, we want to give you a few minutes head start. And uh, thank you for joining us. It's going to be a phenomenal show. I mean, there's more business news that's happened this week than probably any week since I've been doing this. And uh, there's just so much we can talk about, and there will not be enough time to really go through it all. My guest today is Jay Jaheed. He's the founder and CEO of Red Rock Travel Group. You're going to get to hear about that. But we're talking about marketing, and I mean, there's nobody better at, uh, at at marketing than him. And we've spent so many countless hours talking business and strategy and marketing for years. Uh, you know, this isn't somebody I met last week and and just having on. I mean, this this guy knows his stuff. We've uh, uh, we've just been through been through a lot of business together, and so uh, and I respect him personally, professionally, and uh, very just uh, thankful for for him, his friendship, and uh, Thank you. and certainly his business acumen and expertise. So you guys are in for a treat today. So um, man, we've got the the business news at the top is going to be really uh, exciting. Uh, you're going to just love. It's fascinating. It, it fascinates me, um, and then the. Uh, we're going to go deep on marketing. Uh, we're going to talk about because most business owners are really bad at marketing. They just aren't. They're just not good. And entrepreneurs even more so because they're such visionaries and they think social media or posting or really spamming on social media is just going to get it done and on their personal pages. And it just doesn't. I mean, it's fine to make people aware of what you're doing and what you have, but yeah, there's there's a way to market. Marketing is an industry. It's not just something you do on the side or as an after- afterthought. Um, there's a lot of strategy in it. And so uh, we're going to go deep on that. Uh, people think that, you know, even the hoverboard and things like that, that, when we grew that, it wasn't just luck. I mean, some of it was, uh, was fortune. But we could have at least gotten it to a certain point before it became a household name, you know, globally. And uh, so that's really what we're here to, to do today is help you grow your business through marketing and uh, through really understanding the different sides of it. Thank you. Uh, whether it's branding, lead generation, uh, revenue generator, just the entire process. And, and so you'll learn when to do what and for what purposes. Uh, if it's a product launch, if it's a new company, if you're changing brands, whatever you need to do. And we've got so many, so many case studies. And then the hit list. Oh man, that's going to be fun pulling out all the stops for that. And then the boardroom battles. Man, if I had to be in a boardroom and go to battle with a guy, this is the, this is the one I want to debate <laughs> it with. So, uh, he won't hold back. You'll get to hear it straight. Um, no, no filters on that front, and uh, we'll we'll hear exactly his thoughts, and, and we'll kind of debate what uh, what one of the companies in the news this week needs to do to to, to turn their ship around. So, you know, we'll be getting started here in uh, in probably about a minute and a half. Tom, don't think he's ready. He's he's great. Man, I'm I'm anticipating now. Okay, we're getting started in one minute. <laughs> oh, really exciting as well. We'll be broadcasting live from the campus of Liberty University on October 18th, and so we're really excited about that. And it's going to be a unique experience. And so we'll live stream that across all of the platforms for you. And um, uh, but we'll I don't know where we'll be on the campus or things like that, but it's going to be an incredible show. And, uh, and Tom will still have the different producers here. So, all right, we're going live in 30 seconds. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO and host, Dr. Roland Roberts, where he takes your calls live to help you start businesses, turns companies around, and goes to the mat in boardroom battles. Entrepreneurs, this show is for you. Dealing with the stress of payroll, struggling with time management, losing it balancing family and work, wondering how to get more customers. You are about to get your questions answered. Bringing to you now, America's CEO and former CEO of the Hoverboard Company, here's Dr. Roland Roberts. 
Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, and I'm taking your calls, your questions, and opinions on all things entrepreneurship every Thursday at noon Eastern at 407-916-5400 or toll-free 866-916-5400. So tell me about your product, service, your business, and this is Courageous Entrepreneurs. This isn't for the sissies. This isn't for those that are scared to death <laughs> and uh, need to go find a 9-to-5 job. Actually, those don't even exist. A 7-to-7 job somewhere. And they can tell you when you can go to the bathroom, tell you when you can take vacation and when you can you know, when you're allowed to get sick and things like that. This is for courageous entrepreneurs. And so we're glad that you've tuned in. You can call us today. You can send us your questions at CourageousRadio.com uh, at any time now or throughout the week or on Facebook at Courageous Media. You can watch this show live by going to CourageousRadio.com as well. You can tune in uh, and listen or watch. It's always a lot more fun behind the scenes to uh, to see what's going on. Also, during some commercial breaks, we have some fun with you. And uh, we just want to be able to continue the conversation uh, so joining me in the studio today is a good friend and business owner, Jay Jaheed, and uh, Jay is the founder and CEO of Red Rock Travel Group. They're the premier lead generation firm for the timeshare and vacation club industry, and uh, it's just a brilliant entrepreneur. And uh, so welcome, Jay, to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. Thank you, Roland. Thank cool. you for having me. Glad you're here. All right. Now for my take on this week's top business news. It has been a busy week. It's been an active week. First of all, Arby's. Wow, you're blowing my mind a little bit here because you just bought Buffalo Wild Wings for a few billion dollars, and now you announce you're buying Sonic for $2.3 billion. You are on quite the acquisition spree. It's very impressive. I've heard many people say, I didn't even know Arby's had any money, uh, but it's really Inspire Brands as the parent company, and uh, they, are, they have just done an excellent job, at least at this point, and from what we can see and what we know, uh, it, it's just really... Uh, incredible that Arby's is the one doing this. And it just shows everyone else, all the consumers that drive by these places day in, day out, think it's about the roast beef. They think it's about the sandwich. I promise you for the CEO of Arby's, it has nothing to do with the roast beef. Uh, now, granted, you know, he wants the right ingredients, but what's taking up his time is not how to put together the best sandwich for you. Uh, they've obviously been working on the business and uh, have other competent people running the actual business, especially with their their, their rebrands and so forth. Second thing, Michael Kors is buying, and this is all acquisitions. Mike, uh, Michael Kors announced that they are going to, well, they're in talks and final negotiations to buy Versace for, uh, three, uh, let's see here, for $2 billion. And this really was interesting to me, Jay, because when a lower end brand acquires a higher end brand, uh, there's, there's, there's only a handful of reasons to ever do that. Uh, it's easier, by the way, and usually it is the lower end brand buying the higher end brand, even if the higher end brand uh, because if a higher end brand buys a lower end, then uh, it can cannibalize, it can uh, demean, uh, tarnish yeah. their brand. Now, here's the thing. They can keep them separate. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't um, make – that was really the mistake that Mercedes made in the early 2000s. Uh, they came out with the C-Class and, uh, st you know, the cheap class is what, it, <laughs> is what it was for. They introduced a $29,000 uh, car when all of their others were $100,000. Well, you know, what they found was people didn't – they got the same brand value in in, in, in social status with a twenty nine thousand dollars Mercedes that they did with a hundred thousand dollars Mercedes. So it their sales and revenue tanked. So and, you got to be very careful. In this case, I, I think the logic behind it is really clear because the economy is booming and um, there's more disposable income for their uh, consumer. So they have to find a product that is. Uh, higher revenue than a higher profit than the one they have. So a the higher ticket prices. So the well, acquisition the just makes sense. Well, yeah. And, and you know, Michael Kors has been struggling. And, of course, they once they went into outlet stores and once they kind of did some other things. And Versace, you know, wasn't isn't exactly at the height of their game. I've got several Versace suits. I love them. But um, but they're not at the top of their game right. where, they, where they've been. So it, it is a good strategic acquisition, I think. Um, it's no Louis Vuitton or, or Gucci. Yeah. And so maybe Michael Kors can restore it but to compare, that. But compared to their brand, it will allow them to do some upselling. It, 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 it will. Yeah. yeah, it will. They'll be, and they'll be able to do a lot of cross, uh, cross marketing as well. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, Sirius XM is buying Pandora in a $3.5 billion all stock deal. What I found interesting about this is we've got, um, uh, to, they, they're losing the battle. Pandora is losing the battle against Spotify and Apple, uh, Apple Music. And so this was Sirius's way, uh, and, and really Pandora's way of stay, remaining relevant. Uh, they, I, I, they're really facing extinction for, for, at least from the next generation. They're almost becoming the Facebook 
Like I, I would not, I don't, um, uh, Facebook is very specific marketing and we'll kind of right. get into that in the next segment. But, uh, but my customers or my, my audience does not live on Facebook much anymore. That it, it, your mom and your grandmother are the ones on Facebook. You know, right. it is Instagram, it's Snapchat, it's it's you know these other uh, platforms where where the next generation is living, and uh, and Pandora falls into one of those categories. They were the first market entrant, really. Right. Uh, they were my favorite for years. I I was subscribed to their loyalty. You know, the 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 ad free and commercial free uh, things. But it, you know, it started off at ninety nine cents a month. Went to a dollar ninety nine. I think it's probably like a four ninety nine or five ninety nine right now. And I'm not going to pay annually for ad free, you know, Pandora, just slightly under what I pay for Amazon Prime every year, where I Correct. get their Amazon Music, their Prime videos, their two day shipping. Correct. That's what I listen to, and I think Pandora, even though they were first to market, it's just weird that they never were able to crack the monetization. Thing. They just never monetized on the ad space. That was the original idea that they're going to be, you know, um, an advertising conduit for businesses, but they just never were well, able it, to pull that off. Yeah, and the subscribers, they really right. struggled getting the subscribers. Uh, they didn't know which business model was going to be right. And now what we're seeing is really what they thought could be sold was a commodity. Amazon yes. just throws it in for free. Uh, you know, Apple trying to do the, something very similar. I mean, just think about the days we used to go and spend 99 cents to buy a song on iTunes. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just the, the market is changing. And if people don't have vision and they don't understand where it's doing, going, uh, it's absolutely mind blowing actually yeah. how, how different business is going to be. So, uh, and also one of the other interesting things, Jay, you're going to love this as a business owner and entrepreneur because we got to deal with problems like this all the time, but uh, a former Facebook content moderator. Okay, let that, let that sink in. A former Facebook content moderator uh, is suing Facebook. It was a contractor uh, is suing them for not doing enough for the mental trauma they've experienced being a Facebook content moderator. So, so <laughs> the, the images that I've had to see, the, the the either the content, you know, it's caused so much trauma that I can't do it. I'm just waiting for a nurse or a doctor to sue the hospital because. You know, they saw blood. They, I can't do this. No, I should not be subjected to this kind of trauma. Yeah. Well, don't be a doctor. That's don't true. be a nurse. You, this is, you are not on a plantation. You can resign, sir or ma'am, yeah. from your Facebook content moderating. That's the kind of problems that messes it up for the rest of the employees. Because yeah. then if it, if it ends up on my desk or a CEO's desk, you got to address it and you got to address it for the masses because of one person that, you know, needed to go back to kindergarten. I think you and I talked about this many, many uh, times that people, they don't understand the basic tenet of wealth building is that you have to provide a service or a solution in the market. People still believe that you can make money for nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so there's your econo your lesson in economics, kids. Uh, you know, look, you can kick and scream and pitch your two-year-old toddler fit all you want. All it's going to do is end up raising your price. It's going to raise the cost of your products and goods because we on the back end have to put in services and bring in a bunch of counselors to, to cater and, and to, to people who, who, who shouldn't even be in the role in the first place. Uh, and that's okay. It's what your parents did too. They called you. I mean, they tried to get you to do something and tried to get you to get a good job. They did, they, what they didn't understand is that you are your best security. You investing in your education on the street and in the, and in the classroom and you, you learning your skill and honing and developing that, there is nothing better you can do uh, for you in your life. Entrepreneurship is the greatest form of wealth accumulation and creation today, period, bar none. It's the absolute greatest skill uh, because one of the greatest skills in entrepreneurship is communication and relationship. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back with some really hot tools, marketing tools every entrepreneur and business person should be using. This show is going to be two hours. <laughs> it, it, oh, it, you it, it, it. We just keep going. It, and more than that, like we can't even expound on anything. There's so much. But it's, it's the truth that when you have them. Give me one second. Tell them, do we have a caller? Did I miss a caller? Did I miss a caller? I didn't see. It was up on the screen. Okay. All right. Just making sure. It's not now. Figured they hung up. I think that when, when people do it. Like the basic tenant is that you gotta solve a problem, you gotta provide a service, you gotta get a product to, to be rich. People don't get that. They still think that there's some um, 
extraordinary thing that just makes wealthy people wealthy. Mm -hmm. That's the basic tenet. They think it's uh, yeah, it's, it's some, an aura, something, in, yeah, just, whatever. Something. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, and to be able to something reverse e engineer something esoteric. That, yes. Know, just, yeah. You know, as opposed to reverse engineering, you'd be surprised. Yeah. yeah. So many people miss that point, and it's simple. You know, you pick a problem. There's tons of them out there. Pick a problem, right. solve it. You'll get rewarded. And, and here's the other thing we should talk, talk about at some point: picking a problem that is not just your problem, but that a large number of, of people yeah. have a market. Yeah. A lot of newbie entrepreneurs they create this product or service that solves a problem that they had, which is fine if you know a million other people yeah. have it. It's not fine if you and ten other people have it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think also the self-help uh, industry is not doing good. You know doing a good service to these people. They tell them, Absolutely. just find a passion, find this, find that. Well, you know, I got a lot of passion, but nobody would pay me for it. Right. Well, and more mm -hmm. than that, all you got to do is start a business and you put, you know, every last penny and dime you have in it, I promise you, you're going to get passionate real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you, you will find the freaking passion. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Especially on Fridays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Payroll days. That's how paydays for entrepreneurs is payroll days. Yeah. Or how, how, how much time we got, Tom? Wait a minute, back in one. Back in one, all right. Yeah. We got people on from Kenya, from Nairobi, different parts of Africa. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us today. Kenya is, is going to a big economic big boom. Big revival. Big boom yes. right now. Yep. Back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday from noon Eastern to about 1240 or so. Call 407-916-5400 or toll-free 866-916-5400. Either way, it's 916-5400. Go to CourageousRadio.com to watch us live. It's a lot more fun. You can scroll down to the Entrepreneur Toolkit while you're there, and you'll see a lot of the products and services that I endorse or that I use to in, in, in my business and, and just in the in, in the in the entrepreneur and business world to help get things streamlined and efficient. One of the things that I have in there is a marketing company under travel called My Florida Getaway. And so we are blessed to have founder and CEO Jay Jaheed with me today who founded that company. They're the, the, they're, they are a leading lead generation uh, company, marketing firm for the timeshare and vacation club industry. So Jay, thanks again for being one of the Thank great for today. Me. All right, let's just dig deep on marketing because entrepreneurs are generally very bad at marketing and small business people are bad at marketing. Why are we so bad at marketing? Well, usually the entrepreneurs when they start a business is because they have a skill. So somebody who knows how to cook, somebody mm -hmm. who knows how to do, create a product or a service. They're not necessarily um, astute in marketing. So they believe that if I make the best burger, then everybody mm -hmm. will come and have it. Right. But, you right. know, um, and you know this, if you take any business class to tell you that the, he with the best product necessarily doesn't win. No, no. You know, when I became CEO of the hoverboard company, nobody had ever heard of a hoverboard. I'd heard of a Segway. But when I walked in, it wasn't, the inventor wasn't like, okay, let's, how do we take the hoverboard to market? He had 33 inventions, 33 other inventions. And he was, he was saying, which, which one do we take to market? Right. You know, I, right. you can only ride one horse, yeah. you know, to the, yeah. at the Kentucky Derby. Uh, which one are we going to ride? And I meet so many entrepreneurs that they go ahead, they create a good product or good service, excellent product, excellent service, and then they fail because they don't get to attract customers and they don't get to get to traction because they believe this idea that just build it and they'll come. Mm -hmm. No, they have to know about it. They mm -hmm. have, and you have to speak to them at the right time, at the right moment, using the right channel. Right, yes. right, in the, in the right moods. I mean, it's interesting that a lot of people... Mm -hmm. That uh, would zero in on on they find out that HR directors happen to watch one particular show, 
you right. know, at right. a specific time, right. you know, as opposed to yeah. the traditional lead generation marketing, uh, you know, email spam or, you know, LinkedIn messages or, you know, things like that. It's really meeting them maybe even sometimes when they're not, when they're more open as opposed to the guards being up and saying, Hey, this will solve a problem that I'm currently facing. And now with all the media available there, it's very difficult. You have to know what kind of customer you're talking to. Like, for example, I love to read paper books. Okay. However, I like to text a lot. You would assume that somebody who texts a lot, you know, would yeah, buy they want Kindle or yeah, something, right? Yeah, but it's not yeah, ebooks, right? So uh, you know, for me, you, you can reach me by placing a you know an ad in a magazine, mm -hmm. you know, or send me a text. I will not answer the phone. I will not get on Facebook. So you have every there's a channel for every customer, right? Which yeah. always goes back to one of the number one rules of marketing is know your market, know right. who your customer is, right. not who you right. think it is. And right. I'm telling you, every single time I've ever done a study with this in a company. They were always shocked. They were always marketing to the wrong customer. They were yeah. marketing to the customer they did not want. Correct. And I agree with that because they start with the premise. Build the best product or build the best service, and that's all you have to do. You will win. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, and we were talking about Pandora. I mean, mm -hmm. they were the first comer to the market. I mean, we know this rule has never been violated. First to market is the one who dominates. Mm -hmm. Pandora is getting, you know, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're getting, almost yeah, irrelevant. Like Spotify yeah. and Amazon and stuff like that, mm -hmm. because it's a it's still a better product. Yeah. They were just losing. Correct. And I and I think the premise they started with is that we're just going to stream. They, they don't know who the end user is. Mm -hmm. What are the habits of that user? What what how can we talk to them? How can we monetize that model? And I think that's what the big pitfall for a lot of entrepreneurs. All right. So here's the other thing I see mistakes, uh, you know, newbie entrepreneurs make. Uh, they they think that they are going to start posting on social media or they think that they are going to start, uh, you know, sponsoring the little league team and have a banner up or they're going to start going to every tr booth, trade show booth that, you know, that exists, every farmer's market, every everything and and. Farmer's market is not for every new business, right? I mean, yeah. maybe if you're coming up with a unique candle company or some kind right. of beeswax something or, you know, then great. But but uh, but that's not where, you know, your new software company needs to go. Your your new software company does not need to go sponsor the Little League team whenever it's bleeding cash. Right. What it needs to do, it, it does not need to be building brand awareness at yeah. that point. And so talk to us for a moment, the difference in your mind between branding, brand awareness, and, and lead generation. Because you're in the lead generation business. And what I like about that is, and that's still not the closing business, but the lead generation business, when, when I spend marketing dollars as a startup, you, you, it needs to equate to revenue. Correct. I mean, d right. a direct correlation. If Correct. it does not generate revenue, don't do it. And I can go through most entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs, marketing budgets, and they are investing in marketing that does not translate to revenue. Correct. What are you doing? Correct. And I think that the thing is that because we go back that there's this, this the, deep ignorance of marketing. So the way it goes is that when they start a business and then they don't know what the market is, they don't even know what the product, how to right. position the product, all these, you know, rudimentary things, then they say, okay, I got to go do some marketing. And then they try to copy big companies. Oh, yes. And they start doing branding. I think no entrepreneur should spend a dollar on branding. Branding is a consequence. You know, mm -hmm. you should spend marketing to generate direct response which is we call direct response marketing, which we just alluded to is that we have to generate revenue. And then branding is nothing but a consequence of how good you did with those people who decided to give you a shot. Mm -hmm. That's how it, that, you know, at the first 10 years of any enterprise, that's what you should be worried about. Revenue, 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 revenue. It's revenue generation. Yeah. It, your R&D, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's, most of theirs stands for, you know, uh, rip and duplicate. They, they're not doing anything creative. Yeah. Uh, and they say it's, you know, that uh, that's the most sincere form of flattery, but but you know what? That's why they will never win. You will never end up number one or number two in the world right. if you can't create, if you can't innovate, and also if you don't understand what marketing, like you said, which channels, which platforms, right. Right. when to do it, what time of day, yeah. and it's and more than just knowing when to schedule the social media post. Right. I mean, this goes way deeper than that. Correct. Yeah, way deeper than that because the the problem is that people they just start copy pasting. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna get. I ask a lot of people. Oh, I'm gonna. I have to get a website. Why do you need? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a website. There's a lot of successful companies that you just have a Facebook uh, page and right. they're doing really great. Right. If I owned a, a service business, especially, I don't know, uh, you know, it, I would probably have some, some redundant. I would have a website, but that would not be my lead generation engine. Right. My lead generation right. is the Facebook page or the right. Facebook group or whatever you're creating a tribe around. Uh, and even then, 
you have to think through you know the future of Facebook and the direction they're going. But that's the point of being an entrepreneur. What you what the right strategy is for today, and what the right strategy is for your business and your industry and your your marketing. I promise you, it's going to be different six or twelve months from now. Definitely two years from now. And I'm the one that wants to come in and change your world, change change the game on you. And I want to help you change the game in your industries. You are listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. And I'll be right back with the business hit list. It is my winners and losers for the week. You don't want to miss it after this short commercial break. There, it's too deep. And, and, and really, you know, we need to take calls of what... What's the issue? What, where are people struggling with their marketing, with their branding? Uh, and also understand the difference between marketing and sales. Correct. 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 You know, they don't know, they don't understand the difference. I think, I think for the majority of entrepreneurs, which is your audience, the biggest help you can do is educate them about marketing. They just, like I said, they have the assumption, I'm just going to get the, you know, and we have a friend that, you know, we went to his restaurant. Right, yeah, right, right. I mean, you know, he's just like, I'm going to have the best location, the best food, and they will come. No. Right. And it's not like they hate you. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know what to message and what you stand about, you know. And a like, lot of it's environment. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it's. Uh, so many businesses, like you say, what you do, and they can't give it to you. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be able to, to tell what your company does in 140 Characters or less. Just like when I meet you, Roland, what do you do? I, I serve you. entrepreneurs. Exactly. Exactly. Serve entrepreneurs. Yeah. Sometimes it's on the it's on the wait radio every week, it's on the cruise, but I serve entrepreneurs. That's exactly. Yeah. But a lot of entrepreneurs don't know. When you yeah. meet them, you say, What do you do? Right. And when they take that deep breath, like how do I explain this? You you already <laughs> lost. <laughs> and here's the other thing. When they're asking that, if I actually told them what I did. We'd be there for a long time, Correct. right? If you look at all the different things, and what does my typical day look like? And who do I have? I had 21 phone calls yesterday. I was able to take two of them because I'm in meetings the rest of the time with different but, people. But that's your skill set and all the experiences you have. But like you, what is your mission? You were like, help entrepreneurs. Yeah. It came out so instinctive, like it's in your DNA. Right. That, that, and that, that helps me say no to, to things that do not serve that calling yeah. and that purpose and that anointing. Yeah. If it doesn't do yeah. it, then it's Back not for me. One. Back in one minute. Guys, hope you're enjoying it. Man, isn't it great to have this guy today? Jay's just tearing it up. And uh, we've got some big brands coming here in just a moment. On the I'm, And I'm starting with the losers on the hit list, so it's going to be fun. See you on the other side. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, and I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern Time, 407-916-5400. It is time now for my business hit list. This and boardroom battles, I'm telling you, are my favorite segments of the radio program. I just love it uh, because there's a lot of companies that do things overtly wrong, just absolutely in your face, egregiously wrong. And then there are companies that blow my mind with their generosity or their kindness or their goodness. So I showcase both of them in the business hit list, but I'm starting. In fact, I've got so many this week that I'm going to have to put some of them on Facebook at Courageous Media because I'm not going to be able to get to all of them today. One of them is a spectacular story uh, that I got. And if you've got one, by the way, I got several people messaging in and, and emailing in this week about uh, experiences that they had Four companies to go on the, the the winners or the losers. All right. So if you've got one, then uh, then certainly send that to me. But first up this week is the Miss America organization. Now, I, <laughs> let me let me paint the picture here. You know, it's a disaster. That's the short of it. Early at the beginning of this year, they had eight hundred and forty five thousand dollars in assets. They are now three three million dollars in the red. 
complete reversal, and it was supposed to do the exact opposite. They brought in Gretchen Carlson to turn it around, uh, trying to capitalize on the Me Too movement. Uh, and, and so they took a, the, you know, the man bashing approach, uh, in, because the former CEO was a pig and said inappropriate things about women and, I mean, just horrible, you know, disrespectful things. So they went, the, the pendulum swung to the complete opposite side, uh, for, for PR and for marketing purposes, not how do we actually fix this ship. And so, uh, if you do things as a marketing stunt, it will always bite you in the rear. Right. You will never win trying to pull the PR stunt. Uh, it's a slower way to build sometimes, you know, we're doing it the right way. In fact, right. usually it's a slower way, but it's always the right way. Uh, but what I find is, um, you know, and allegedly this week, uh, you know, she had said one of the ways she got the board to agree to not having the swimsuit segment was that allegedly she told the board that ABC said, you, we won't televise your show if you have the swimsuit. So it's either have the swimsuit and not be televised or be televised and not have swimsuits. So what's most important as for a, from a business decision? Okay. I've been, I've had an organization since the, you know, for, for, for however long it's been in existence. And, and then all of a sudden I'm having to make this decision. Do I lose our TV uh, network spot or do I evolve the organization? Now that was the way it was positioned to the board. So the board naturally says, okay, well, let's, we've got to keep our, our relationship with the network and we've got to keep our spot. Let's adapt the program. Let's adapt what the, the, the segments are fine. That's not, that, I mean, they, they could have done that. They still went about it the wrong way, but, but, but that's, you could do that. They could have done it. But what happened instead is now it came out this week. ABC is saying that issued a statement that they never said, wow. you have to choose between swimsuit or being nationally televised. Whoa, that changes everything. It was then an agenda. It was things that were said behind closed doors to manipulate a, an outcome and a decision. That is a disaster, a leadership 101 disaster. And I got to tell you, the problem uh, is never the man or the woman leading an organization. It's not. Uh, well, I mean, it's not that it's if it's a man or a woman leading it. It's not the color of the person that's leading your company. That's the problem. It's it's not the things that we like to make it about the problem. Hear me. The problem is that you've lost what it uh, what it means to even empower people or to empower women and leadership. You opted instead for the optics and the the expediency of a fad, and it is blowing up in your face. You went from $845,000 in assets to to losing, bleeding, hemorrhaging $3 million, and there's no end in sight. Now, I want to contrast that with with uh, a, a friend, a dear friend of mine who uh, managed uh, or had the contract for the Miss United States organization and now owns Cosmos uh, International, uh, a, a, a national and international pageant system and also manages the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, fitness pageant. And, um, you know, I, I am very loyal to her because of her faith and her business acumen. And she does the right thing when no one is looking. It's leadership. It comes down to leadership. They could do the exact same things and they're, they do have swimsuit in theirs and, uh, you know, in, in her, in her system. And, uh, but it's done right. Uh, the, the, the leadership is right. The, the business ethics are right. The manipulation is not there. The posturing isn't there. Right. The integrity is there. And you will never run a successful company or right. be the leader that you're supposed to be without integrity. How many times I have agree. we talked about that? I agree. I agree. I totally agree. And I think the problem with Miss America is that they lost what they are in it for. Yeah, and I think exactly. That, you know, I think leader, you can't fake it. You, you can't. You they're can. trying to fake and it. A lot of companies just, I mean, like, look at Kodak. They lost what they're in it for. They got so conceited and that um, they're the best and all that. And, you know, when, when you lose what you are in it for, that's what happened. You start making decisions um, based on short-term view, not a long-term view. And, you know, you go sideways yeah. and, it, and the market punishes you. So, so let's talk about the short-term view right here. Yeah. Weight Watchers. The second company on my hit list this week is Weight yeah. Watchers because they just changed their name to WW. I kid you not. This week, they changed it from Weight Watchers to WW. It's the initials, WW. And, yeah. and you know what they say if they ask what it stands for? The answer that they give now is it's we're, we're wellness watchers. You've yeah. got to be kidding me. Yeah. You just lost your entire market. Nobody goes and spends $200 a month on their uh, proactively on their wellness because you are not solving a problem people want to spend money to fix right now. Right. But, but, you know, if somebody has a few extra unwanted pounds, they will spend or do whatever they have to, yeah. to get that off. Yeah. That's a problem that you can solve in the marketplace as a business owner and entrepreneur. 
Now you're trying to solve this nebulous problem. You know, yeah. you're, you're trying to become uh, PR friendly and it's going to blow up in your face. I mean, it already has. You're already, uh, you know, declining. But to, 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 I mean, just my, my summary is bye bye Weight Watchers. Bye Felicia. You're done. You know, if you don't, if you don't really get some strong leadership that has, actually has a vision, there is no vision in going to WW. I think that's going back to the marketing segment. This is a mature company that's making big, big marketing uh, mistakes. I think they're trying to appeal to the, to the millennials. I mean, uh, the numbers show that there's a big obesity uh, problem with the millennials and younger crowd. So they're trying to change that because Weight Watchers was targeting usually middle-aged women when mm -hmm. it launched. And now they want to rebrand it, but that rebranding is kind of tricky. But it wasn't just the program that Correct. women that, that they enjoyed. It was the camaraderie. Correct. The camaraderie. It was the community. Yeah. They really it was a tribe. There Correct. was a subculture. Correct. That's what kept people going back. Correct. This wellness, people aren't going to show up to a weekly meeting or yeah. to a monthly meeting for for general health and wellness. And there's and the competition is so much greater in this arbitrary, nebulous world of wellness. Correct. And you're right. When, when you look at it, how Weight Watchers started, it was a support group. And then you talk about the food and stuff like that. But now they're trying to tackle a new market, which is the millennials, and you just don't know how to communicate with them. And then they said it's branded WW because Weight Watchers maybe is associated with their mom. So uh, a millennial will not go to where their mom went. I but get they it, got but it they, wrong. But the exactly. <clears throat> so they the problem is not the rebranding. It's just how you did it. Correct. It's just an absolute disaster. Uh, you are on the loser list. You did not realize that people will crawl over bro broken glass to shed unwanted pounds, and you're going to be fighting the cobwebs every time your employees open the door, unlock the door every morning with this new approach. Hopefully, you'll get some leadership in there that'll that'll turn it around before you float off into obscurity. All right, now for the winners on this week's business list. Number one, squid lips over the water. Squid lips <laughs> over the water. So I ended up, you know, I had uh, in. Uh, in Melbourne, Florida, Tuesday evening, and uh, or, yeah, Tuesday, and um, an event ended up canceling and, and not being able to do it. So I ended up at dinner, and while I was there with some friends, uh, uh, one was telling me about uh, she had taken a friend of hers for, there for his birthday, and uh, literally, it's an hour away from where she lives, and forgot her her wallet or payment, and uh, told the manager, you know, didn't want to tell him, told the manager whenever she got there, look, here's the deal. You know, I, I'm a regular here. Can I just pay you afterwards? He said, you order whatever you want. Get, make sure you get dessert too. And, uh, and they had a great experience. The guy never knew it. And, uh, and she ended up settling up with him. And then of course she took me and we, we were generous. And so it's just an, an incredible place. That's fantastic. Contrast that with, uh, a local restaurant, the porch. I tried to get, I get my, my favorite jalapeno poppers in the world right here in Winter Park, Florida. And, uh, I got my, my jalapeno poppers, but they will, they stopped being willing to serve me my side of blackened chicken breast with some ranch dressing. They stopped be doing that. I have to order two sides and I have to do oh that. I mean, it was just, it was just a disaster. So my second winner for this week is New York Life. Uh, they started sponsoring me, New, Nick McCarthy of New York Life. You can find out about them and their products, financial services at uh, CourageousRadio.com, and you can connect with Nick directly by clicking on New York Life's logo there. Uh, been around a long time, phenomenal organization, and uh, so hope that you'll reach out to Nick. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. When I come back, it's time for the boardroom battles. The gloves are coming off. Yes, sir. Is communities. We got a bunch of twelve-year-olds running yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most disastrous, lame brain. Yeah. The most, the, the thing that is most in demand is support groups. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you know isn't it interesting that the more technology, uh, the the more we get social, which is distancing the relationship. The less connected we are. Right, but what's starting to happen is there's the offline connections, the offline right. tribes and communities right. Right. become that much more critical, right. and, and people value them more yeah. Yeah. because they've experienced I mean, it that the, way. The, these are primal needs. Yes, we. I mean, we we're we're social creatures. We we need to live in groups when we need to feel that connection. Not how many likes, <clears> not how many no. followers, no. not how many shares. It's this. Yeah, yeah. it's this the connection. And I think uh, Weight Watchers missed the boat on that. It's a disaster, and they they look. Yeah. They have, with their infrastructure, with their reach, 
they could have really done this right. Correct. They could have regretted. They could have changed what their centers look like. Two minutes. They could have changed what their what the centers look like. They could have changed even what they did yeah. during the. I think yeah. they changed everything. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Weight Watchers is one of the most politically correct terms to use for something like that. Correct. So the problem was not the name. Yeah. I wouldn't have even done a rebrand. I might have changed the look and the feel. Well, yeah. I, well I would have. Yeah. But I would not have. I mean, it's an iconic. You know, name, and, right. and, and kept completely kept the support um, program. That's what made them successful in the beginning to start with, is that people like the fact that if you go there and you're not alone. Right. You're having this issue, then other people have it too, and that, that's that's what made them successful. Yep. Tom, what do we have? One. One minute. We're back in one. Back in one. 12 minute segment here. 12 minutes. All right. Final segment? Yes, sir. Good. Hope you guys are enjoying it, man. I, do you see how, if, and if we took calls, I mean, we'd, we'd be here another hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, and uh, in, in everybody has specific companies. They don't understand how to connect with people. Mm -hmm. uh, they think it's all smoke and mirrors. Correct. But the kind of battles that you and I have gone to, you cannot build that over over social media. It is in person. It is Correct. it is face to face. And I believe every entrepreneur should spend 90% of their seconds. time on marketing. Say that again. 90% of their time on marketing. 10% on the product or the service. Yeah. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Call 407-916-5400 because now it is time for our boardroom battles. It's the time where the gloves come off. We are, you get to be a fly on the wall or you can call in whatever you want and give us your two cents, your opinion, uh, your thoughts on the matter. But uh, I've got JJ Heed, CEO and uh, founder of Red Rock Travel Group. Uh, the marketing firm that's uh, the premier leader for lead generation in the timeshare and vacation club industry. You can go to myfloridagetaway.com to see one of their main uh, uh, products and services uh, that they can offer you. Uh, but it is time. Look, Jay, GE, we are on the board of GE today. All right. You, so we're going to battle this out. Let me tell you what's happened with GE this week. They used to be the number one uh, most valued company. Uh, and, and now, and now they have fallen on the Dow Jones Industrial, and right. now they have fallen to 59th. They were kicked off of the Dow Jones Industrial for the right. first time since, hold your breath, since 1896, 110, 112 years later. You know, for 112 years, they kept something and they lost it this summer at a time when consumer confidence is at an all time high at a time where, where the economy, yes, it's going to have a correction, but it has, it's not at the moment. And they're losing bad. They went from $400 billion, less than $100 billion. And uh, they just announced that they're selling off. They're trying to sell uh, Thomas Edison's light bulb division. They're trying to sell the division that, that man makes the MRI machines. Correct. And they are uh, Salesforce and PayPal are worth more than GE. That's just amazing. So, I mean, okay. So we're on the board of GE. It is a failing. Yeah. Absolute disaster. All right. Well, well, I think the problem is that the GE is a conglomerate and it's trying to compete in so many domains. And what happened, they did not keep their eye on the market. So, for example, um, in the light bulb market, mm -hmm. there's new comers with, you know, connected houses, uh, smart devices, things like that. So, did, and, and it's, 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 it's the Goliath thing, you know, that we're the biggest, the baddest. So, who's going to come in? And, All right, but you're the CEO. You've got these divisions right now. Yeah. Okay, that uh, you've got your light bulb division, you got you got your railroad division, you have your your health and in, in, in MRI and medical division, um, and you're keeping you know they're keeping a handful of others, but but why those number one and why as a leader, uh, what could they have done to to turn the ship around? And what, what's ironic is they think right now that selling off these three divisions is going to allow them to correct course. And I absolutely do not believe they will correct course. I think it will just, you are dying a slow, ugly death. That's what I think is happening to them. I don't I, think this is going to work. I think the, the strategy they're applying, and I don't, I don't think it's relevant to them, is that they're looking at 
let's do just like Apple, focus on one product. But what I would have done if I was the CEO of GE is that look at my R&D in every single uh, division. If I don't have an edge on the market, then I will liquidate that. And I will shelter myself in capital-intensive units. But that is not a long-term strategy. It's just a short-term strategy, which is I will hide in cap capital-intensive uh, in industries. But the name of the game, how big is their R&D and do they have an edge on the market in every single uh, segment that they're running? And I don't think they have. They lost the edge in, in the light bulb. Uh, I mean, they, yep. st they still do some uh, jet engines and stuff like that. I think that's a capital-intensive. That's going to be healthy for them. But, uh, it, it, you know, when Jack Welch there, he had it run um, magnificently because he, he, you know, he had the right leadership. He, he, he was big on um, R&D, customer service, all that stuff. And I think they lost that edge. Well, they did because they lost leadership. Correct. And in, in a couple thoughts here, uh, it doesn't matter what someone's pedigree is. It matters who they are, their leadership, their integrity. Right. Right. Uh, you can surround yourself with the right people who can get the job done. But but in their case, uh, they have become so irrelevant. What Jack Welch is known for is his leadership, not for how smart he was at jet engines. Not he didn't invent the light bulb. Correct. You know he knew how to lead yeah. people. And if you want a large successful company, if you want to be an, a successful entrepreneur, you've got to learn how to lead people. And you lead people by being kind to people. You lead people by respecting people. You lead people by being honest with people and not leading them on. And not setting them up for for failure. It is it is an, a, an honor and a respect, and it's 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 really one hundred and one with what we've always learned with the golden rule and everything right. else. But it's shocking how many companies lose that. And you can start looking at the financing. You can start looking at their 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 you know debt structures and and so forth. But ultimately, it's, it comes down to leadership is has been the yeah. problem. And also, they have a big problem with that debt. Their retirement programs, their pension programs are super expensive. The capital uh, division, GE Capital, I think uh, uh, they wrote some very bad deals. Yep. So it's just, and I think um, we can't blame just one division for the whole company. I think the whole leadership just lost. You know, when you just start doing it for the money, you deviate from what you're doing. Right, right. You know, I mean, just like you say, you know, I have Bright House. Why don't we just start carrying donuts with us? Because when we go to the customers, we can sell the donuts. I mean, when right. you just start pursuing dollars, believe it or not, it's counterintuitive. Everybody believes that when you're an entrepreneur, you have to pursue the dollar, but it's the most lethal thing you can do. If you pursue dollars, you lose your edge in the market. You lose your reason for existing. Apple, yeah. first trillion dollar company, yeah. Yeah. compared to GE, yeah. down at yeah. a tenth of their size now. Right. You know, Correct. that's the difference yeah. between understanding that principle. Yeah. And, and Apple, they're not, you know, yes, of course, every single, uh, you know, business has to make, generate profit. This is how you sustain this is how you pay your people, but they're not in it just for, they don't say, let's produce the next thing that's going to make us money. They are, for, you know, in the innovation. It's mm -hmm. still like, let's give the customer easy to use electronics. But I got to tell you one thing. I'm glad GE didn't change their, <laughs> their brand thinking that was going to be the solution to the problem. Yeah. <laughs> if I saw that ugly G and E change that is from the 19, you know, yeah. whatever, it's, uh, it, it, it's, well, not only is it it's iconic, and they could refresh, there's no doubt, but the problem is if they refreshed now, it would look like they're using a rebrand to save it. And you can put lipstick on a pig, but, Jay, it is still a pig. Correct. You've got to fix the problem. They need to go back to square one. What yeah. are we in it for? Who are we? Yeah. Who, are, Who we? are we? What are we trying what to do? What do we do? Yeah. Well, pro two questions that I'll, I'd always ask companies. What problem do you solve? Correct. They normally couldn't answer that. Yeah. What problem do you solve? And who owns that problem? It, it could be a plumbing company. Yeah. What problem do I solve? Well, I solve leaks and I install this. And it's, yeah. no, 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 no. Let me tell you the problem you solve, uh, you know, is, 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 is peace of mind. What you're solving is a uh, catastrophe in most people's right. mind. If there's flooding, if there's a pipe burst, right. if there's a problem, no, you are doing so much more than installation. You're doing so much more than right. fixing a crack in a pipe. That's not the pro That's the the end result of the problem you're solving. Right. The real problem you're solving is is my stress and my emotional you know right. well being and my concern and the safety of my family and my pet that's at home that may drown at the piper you know whatever. Correct. Correct. That's the problem I solve. And then who owns that problem? I, I think the problem is that when people start just pursuing the money for its own, they stop solving those problems. And then when you don't solve problems, people don't give you money. People they believe that you know th this is mind-boggling. A lot of entrepreneurs they 
they believe that entrepreneurship is about just going out there and making money. It is not. Mm -hmm. It's about going out there, providing a service or a product that solves a problem, and then the market gives you the money. But when you start pursuing money, you're not solving any problems or creating any product. You're not you know, one of solutions. our listeners uh, ha chimed in and said that, you know, GE has too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, and, 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 you know, it is interesting. You're going to have, with, with that size of a company, a $100 billion company, you're going to have a lot of leaders. Correct. Uh, what you've got to do is learn how to lead leaders. Yeah. That's the business yeah. you're in, not, not leading the front line at, at a restaurant. You're leading leaders. And in, in terms of too many cooks in the kitchen, uh, another way of that could be looked you're going to have a lot of cooks. What you need, though, is all those cooks on the same page, cooking from right. the same recipe, yeah. in it for the same things. And, and that's very difficult when you have that large of an audience because you attract who you are, not who you want. If you come in and just see the numbers and you don't see human beings and you don't see people, then you can have your 300,000 employees, your half a, half a million employees, and you're still going to lose because right. you just see numbers on a spreadsheet. And those are real people's lives. And then you start attracting other people who could care less and that it's all about that. And so then they don't hear the good ideas that come from the front line. They don't know the, the leading edge things that they could invent and create because of the resources that they have or because of the brand strength that they've had. But uh, I'm telling you one thing, uh, when you start looking at the number of companies that have been on the Dow Jones uh, industrial average that have sh uh, uh, shrunk to the degrees that they have, uh, the, the the writing uh, the writing is on the wall. Obviously, they'll be around you know for a while longer. But uh, but to actually turn it around, you would need such a bold, visionary leader. And I'm telling you, most boards of directors would not allow the kind of leader to go into GE right now that it would require to turn it around. They would kick and scream because there would not Correct. be immediate short term gains on Wall Correct. Street, which would then be a problem. Correct. So uh, anyway, uh, Jay, thanks again for joining me on Boardroom Battles. Uh, you know, that's not an easy problem to solve. But thanks for being the CEO of a hundred billion dollar company today uh, okay. and a hundred and hundred and twenty year old company. Join me on my next all inclusive three day, two night faith based CEO cruise. It's literally a week from Sunday. We're selling a week from Sunday. There's a few cabins left at www.ceocruise.com. It's $199 per person, and that includes everything, including your gratuities. And uh, we'll have Peter Lowe, the founder of the Get Motivated Success Seminars on board, the Tom Feltenstein, the man who invented the McDonald's Happy Meal. you got to get a picture with him. And uh, we've just got uh, Steffi Williams, who I mentioned earlier, that owns the Cosmos International Pageants, with Christina Lee, who owns the Glass Slipper. Just a lot of business owners, a lot of great people who will be on there. Also, I'll be at Tom Coast Tavern tonight at 6.30 if you're in Orlando. Come on by, pull up a chair. We'll continue the conversation. Jay and I have about a couple hours more uh, worth of talking that we need to get through on this marketing stuff. And uh, so many things that we could have talked about today. And I just love getting to know my audience. And, and besides, I mean, I just love people uh, in general. So uh, so we'd like to just visit with you. Uh, but uh, anyway, you've got to be hungry and uh, you've got to go after it. Get get rid of the, don't just get rid of the nine to five. I mean, keep keep your day job, but start something, do something, build something for your family. Solve, make a better tomorrow for you, the rest of the world and the people around us. Uh, you know, contribute. You've got gifts, talents, skills, and abilities that I don't have and that no one else has. What we're here to do is help guide you in yours, not to do it for you, not to execute for you, but to encourage you, inspire you, guide you, counsel you, advise you. That's what we're here to do so that you can be at the top of your game. I'll see you tonight, 630 at Tom Coast Tavern. I'll be taking your calls, growing your businesses, and creating breakthroughs again next Thursday. Thanks again to my amazing sponsors, New York Life, Win Experiences, and Tom Coast Tavern. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, encouraging you to live your faith in business. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO, Dr. Roland Roberts. We pour time-tested business principles into hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs every week, and we could not do it without your sacrificial giving. If you want to engage Dr. Roberts to speak or work with your organization, connect with us at CourageousRadio.com or at Courageous Media on Facebook. Join us next week as Dr. Roland Roberts shapes the lives and businesses of entrepreneurs the world over. All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being a part of the behind the scenes. Jay, thanks again for being here, Thank you for sharing all of your, 
your wisdom. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back next Thursday. And, uh, and I've got a, uh, my, my guest next week is a entrepreneur from Africa. Uh, that will be in the United States going on the CEO cruise. So, uh, so we'll have, have a fun time next week as well. Hope you enjoyed it. So much business news. I didn't even cover a fraction of the things. And these are just the things I think that most people miss, you know. Uh, so get, get some highlights. Yeah. Have a great week. I would like to come back again. You are always welcome, brother. Yeah. yeah.